This is a place in the Olympic Park that very few people get to see. It's a dressing room much like any other, white walls, a few benches and coat hooks. But it's in places like this the gold medals will be won and lost. This is the inner sanctum where the last few crucial moments are spent before stepping out into the megawatt light of the competition arena just a few yards down that corridor. It is here that athletes perform the highly secretive routines designed to take them into the zone. Here you will see some truly bizarre things. Some athletes in half trances pacing from foot to foot, others with their eyes closed, visualising optimum performance. In many ways, this is one of the most surreal places in sport, but also perhaps one of the most fascinating. Champion athletes, top athletes, gold medal athletes, the gold medal mindset, if you like. That type of athlete will not see pressure as a problem they will perceive it as a privilege. So the key question is, do the psychological rituals that athletes use in the dressing room and continue to use right out here in the arena actually work? A psychologist would always say you control the controllables. You're not in control of the weather, you're not in control of the opposition, you're not in control of the TV audience or the crowd or the event or the, you know, that's all beyond you. You can only control how you perform when the gun goes off. You narrow it all the way down to something incredibly simple. I can only be as good as I can be, and when I've crossed the line, I'll see what that got me. That's a very calming, focusing, and quite inspiring thought. Performance psychology is, to a large extent, about the elimination of doubt. Doubt is catastrophic. If you don't believe you're going to nail a forehand or score a penalty, you're almost certain to miss. That's why visualising a brilliant performance is so important. It can help to eliminate doubt. Any belief can have astonishingly powerful effects, providing it is held with sufficient conviction. Maybe that's the key here, is you need to find something that works for you. Every athlete is an individual, and you can, you can take out the training manual, you can take out the sports psychology book, and you can say, well, Michael Johnson did this, and Carl Lewis did this, and Muhammad Ali did this, and you can go on and on and on through the greats, but none of them are who you are, and you have to find your own way. Delivering under pressure is a rather brutal thing, but also a profoundly subjective one. Many athletes are overcome with nerves, others are afflicted with terrible self-doubt. Is it any wonder that they reach for the particular ritual that makes sense to them, that provides a sense of reassurance and control? What is certain is that that minute difference between victory and defeat on the biggest stage of all is often to be found not in skill or effort, but in the recesses of the mind. All right, everyone, let's get it going. Jeremy, what do you got? A guy who 16 months ago had never played in the major leagues, but now he's been elected to two all-star teams, won the Rookie of the Year Award of the American League unanimously, and many people in baseball are saying that he has the potential to be the best ever at his position. Where was he a year and a half ago? That's the thing that makes Evan Longoria in a lot of ways so special. I mean, he really did come out of nowhere in a sense. Not only was he not drafted out of high school, not only was he not recruited by a single Division I baseball program, he was barely recruited by Division III, which doesn't award scholarships. What changed for him? Well, he'll tell you the most important thing that changed for him was his mental maturation. Walk slow to the plate. Remember your breathing. Stick with the approach. Keep the routine going. Get into the game. Don't worry about the result. He's the left field. How far is this one going to go? Evan Longoria with a monster blast. What goes on in the mind of Tampa Bay Rays third baseman Evan Longoria has helped him emerge as one of the game's highest profile young stars. The focus, the sense of calm, the faith in process, they're all essential components of his makeup. To us, it looks like it just happens 
naturally, but there is a, a, a method. His ability to be in the present moment makes him one of the best. When the pitch is being thrown, he's already forgotten about last at bat, and all that exists is this particular pitch, and this particular pitch is coming to me right now. I see a lot of guys who have a lot of physical ability but don't uh, have enough up top to you know, be able to control certain situations or you know, some guys don't really buy into the whole uh, mental uh, training side of baseball, I guess. But for me, I've been doing it for so long that it's, it's something that I trust. Longoria has been doing it for five years. Before then, there was no reason to believe he'd develop into a major leaguer. In 2003, when he graduated from high school, 1,480 players were selected in the baseball draft. He wasn't one of them, nor was he recruited to play Division I college baseball. To continue to play the game, Longoria enrolled at Rio Hondo, a junior college just a few miles from his hometown in Southern California. After hitting 430, Longoria transferred to Division I Long Beach State. There, he was introduced to the theories of Ken Revisa, a professor of kinesiology and author of several books on sports psychology. More than anything else, Revisa preaches the gospel of mental preparation and structure. He teaches players to recognize failure as an unavoidable part of the game and how not to dwell on it. How do you think those theories helped him? I think it calmed him. I think the mental game really helped him and how he was way balanced after bad at bats or bad games. Oh, come on, you can't just turn it over like that. As Longoria matured physically, his mental training allowed him to maximize his talents. In the 2006 draft, three years after failing to be selected at all, Longoria was the third overall pick. The Tampa Bay Double Rays select Evan yeah! Longoria's mental maturity helped convince the Rays that he could be the cornerstone of the franchise. Just six games into his major league career, they signed him to a nine-year contract worth up to $44.5 million. Coincidentally, Longoria had found another true believer in Rays manager Joe Madden, a longtime proponent of the Revisa method. What Ken does is it's an attempt to make you think in a different or more clear way, controlling the controllable aspects of, of playing this game. When you're putting on the batting gloves, put on the batting gloves. When you step into the box, be in the box. Be where you need to be when you need to be there. Swing and rocket it into left center field. That's going to roll all the way to the warning track. There is a zen-like quality to Longoria's focusing techniques. Ken talks a lot about the focal point. If I make an error in the field or if I swing at a pitch in the dirt at the plate and I really feel like you know, I've lost control of, of, you know, either my emotions or the at-bat. That's when I step out. I always look at the left-field foul pole, at the top of the left-field foul pole. Um, just Wherever because, you are, just Yeah, just park. because I know there's always going to be a top of the left-field foul pole, so. And, and it works for you. It works for me. Even when he's not in the lineup, Longoria follows a mental routine. He'll slide on his batting gloves and imagine himself at bat. When he is playing, rituals help him relax and focus. But let's say, for example, here comes his pitch, he fouls it off. He will step out of the box, he'll undo his gloves, release that pitch, grips the gloves back on, steps in the box, and he's back. I mean, he gets upset, but he's got some tools that he uses, and he knows that's part of the game. And then this goes back to his background where it didn't come easy. He had to struggle at times. From undrafted and unrecruited to the All-Star Game and the World Series. It's been a quick trip for Evan Longoria. Now comes the hard part, maintaining focus. Do you think there will be a day when you don't need a focal point, when you don't need the mental exercises that you do? I know. I don't think there will be because uh, as soon as you start believing that in this game, you'll you'll get humbled in a heartbeat. I'll always have that to to kind of keep in the back of my mind, and when I need it, use it. Get rid of those negative thoughts. Get back to the moment. Prepare to get a hit. And now, as you've seen, these athletes are going through a period where they're uncomfortable. The key thing is, how do they get comfortable with that feeling that they have? 
with those distractions. And this is where the mental game definitely comes into play. That we have skills that we can use to get control of those situations. And one of those skills is I need to get myself where I need to be when I need to be there. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to try this exercise for a moment. What I want you to do is I want you to give me total undivided attention for the next 15 seconds. Okay? And what I'm asking each and every one of you right now is to make a commitment to do that. If you can't do it for 15, then do it for five seconds. I don't care, but I want you to make a commitment to the time period you're going to spend. Okay, you ready? Set, go. For a short period of time, you can do anything you want with your focus. Right now, each and every one of you is right here, right now, in this moment, absorbed in what you're doing. Feel the energy in the room as you're sitting there with teammates and everyone's right there. Okay, that's it. 15 seconds. Let go. Whew. Yeah. Every one of you did something a little different. Some of you turned in with, tuned in with your eyes. Some of you tuned in with your ears. You really heard every word. Some of you were getting images of yourself. This is what being in the moment is about. What if I were to say to you, okay, I need total undivided attention for the next 45 minutes. Ready, set, you're going to go, no way, man, no way. But for 15 seconds, you can do anything. So why is it in a game of basketball, if you're struggling defensively, you're trying to turn your whole defense around? How about if you just take care of it the next possession? How about as a pitcher in baseball, you got runners on first and second, no outs. Instead of trying to get out of the inning, how about if you just focus on hitting the mitt with the next pitch? Because what becomes critical is keeping this thing simple. And the best way to keep it simple is be here now. The time is now, the place is here, manage the moment, focus on the process of what you're doing and not the outcome. If you stay with the process, it's going to be much easier to be in the present, as positive as you can be, focused on what you're doing in that moment.